This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is wonderful to be in worship with you today here on this fourth Sunday of Easter and also Mother's Day. As we get started, a few announcements. Today begins the start of our Baby Bottle Boomerang fundraiser that will run from Mother's Day until Father's Day. Uh, this is a fundraiser for Save a Life, what is now the Dale County Pregnancy Center, and we hope you are taking part in that. Also, this evening, there will be no chapel. This Wednesday at noon, we will continue our Bible study on the book of Ezra at noon and we hope you join us for that also grief support group is meeting tomorrow at 5 30 p.m in the fellowship hall and it was so wonderful last sunday to celebrate our seniors and church sco church scholarship applications are now available in the church office and we ask that those applying submit their applications by monday july the 11th as we continue in worship let us hear this prayer Good morning, uh, happy Mother's Day everyone. Uh, to commemorate the honor and the memory of my mother for my prelude today, I'm going to play her absolute favorite song. It is How Great Thou Art.
us join in our call to worship. Let everything that has been praise the name of the Lord. Mountains and hills, fruit and trees, and all cedars shall praise the name of the Lord. Young men and women alike, old and young together, shall praise the name of the Lord. We shall praise your name, O God, for your glory is above earth and heaven. Let us worship God. Let us pray together. O God, you fulfill the desire of all who call upon you. We gather to worship and praise your name. You uphold those who are falling and raise up those who are bowed down. You are faithful in words, gracious in deeds, just in all ways, and kind in all that you do. Your dominion shall endure forever. With our mouths we will give you blessing and honor. Amen. Please rise for our hymn of praise for the beauty of the earth, number 92. Let us affirm our faith, the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Invite our ushers to the front to take our morning offering. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving generously to the life of the church. You're welcome to continue if you'd like to give online, or you can give this morning in person. Let's ask God's blessing upon the money that is given. Gracious God, we pause to give you thanks for how you watch over and take care of us. Truly, all that we have comes from you. Joyfully, cheerfully help us to give back. We pray your blessing upon these tithes and offerings. May this offering go to help strengthen your church in this community and throughout the world. In the strong name of Christ, we ask. Amen. Please remain standing for our hymn of preparation, Happy the Home When God is There, number 445.
seated. Let us listen now as we go to God in prayer. Holy, loving God, we give you thanks for this day, and we give you thanks for the lives that we are living and your work among them. There are so many in the world, O oh God, who are in need of love. Remind us of what love can do, how it feeds the hungry, provides companionship to the lonely, restores a sense of worth to the broken, comforts the distraught, heals the sick in body and spirit. Let us be your disciples that you have told us to be, sharing your love with all. Give us the will to carry out your commands. Born up by your love for us, may we spread love all around as we pray in the words that Christ gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 to 16. It says there, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi. The names of his two sons were Malon and Chelon. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Chelon also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be. Sheila had been in therapy for 12 years with the same female therapist. And so the therapist thought it was time to dismiss her patient. In three days, Sheila called her therapist and said, I depend on you for everything. You're like a mother to me. I can't do without you. Her therapist tried to soothe her, saying, Come on now, I'm not a mother to you. Where are you? He says, I'm at home. Well, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm having breakfast. Well, what are you having? Well, I'm just drinking a cup of coffee. You call that breakfast? Sounds like a mother, huh? Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers and grandmothers and mother-like figures. Today is a special day that we honor and thank God for the good gift of mothers. And Ruth can help us as we reflect and honor the role of mothers. Ruth, she exhibits commitment and loyalty and dedication that is inspiring. Naomi, she was the mother-in-law who loved like a mother, a loving mother. And I'm referring to a loving mother as one who points her family to God. David Jeremiah, he writes that Ruth we find a picture of what life was like during the days of the judges. 
that there was a severe famine that came upon the land. And this family from Israel, they moved to Moab. And while they were there, all the men in the family die. And so then, these three widows, they move back to Judea. And while they were there, uh, Ruth meets and falls in love and marries Boaz. And Boaz, he becomes a figure like Christ, one of redemption. Ruth, from the beginning to the end, we find redemption. And this Hebrew word occurs some 20 times in the book of Ruth. Ruth, she accepts the God of Naomi. And she becomes a picture of Paul. A Paul who trusted not just in the physical descent of those from Abraham, but in one who has a faith like Abraham. The book of Ruth is four chapters that helps us to recognize the importance of a divine and human love. Ruth, it inspires us to recognize that God can make a way even amidst the hardships of the past, to trust in God in the present and depend on God with hope for the future. Returning home. These three widows, they're out on their own. In the ancient world, women had no rights. And widows, they were considered harshly, given no voice, no future. And Naomi hears that God is providing food for those in Bethlehem, in Judea. And so, they decide to gather together and to return back to Judea. She loved both of her daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. Now, you know the difference between an in-law and an outlaw? Outlaws are wanted. Oh, come on. But this mother-in-law, she was different. Sometimes mother-in-laws are given a hard time. Oh, but she loved both of them in the midst of difficult and trying days, just like Jesus. He loved Jerusalem like a mother hen desires to take her chicks up under her wings. When you think about your mother, what comes to your mind? I think about my mother and how she loved and encouraged and supported me when I was young and believed in me and encouraged me. We all need encouragement. Encouragement is like the oxygen we breathe. When I was young, my mom gave me a choice about going to church. My family didn't always go, but I always wanted to be there. I wanted to be a part of what was happening at church. Now, and years later, as I've grown up now, she said she gave me a choice back then because she knew what choice I would make. Naomi, she gave her daughters-in-law a choice. Why don't you go back? Go back to your own land, to your own mother's home in Moab. Don't follow me, it's too hard, there's no future. Go back. And Naomi paints this vivid picture of how bleak the situation was for women in this day and time. Would you wait until I get married again and have a son and for him to grow up and then to marry him? There's no way, it's impossible. And Naomi believes that God has turned his back upon her. Hear those words, ouch. Naomi, she is a female Job. Remember that Job's friends, they wanted to find out, why has all this hardship come upon you, Job? It's because of all your sin. But Naomi was blessed with her daughters-in-law, Orpha, who came a certain way, 
and then Ruth, who stayed with her. And think about women. They have a hard plight today with all the pressures and society demands. But during the ancient world, women had little rights. In Orpha, she decides to go back to Moab. But the text does not criticize her for this. And I see Orpha as a representative figure that in times of the crossroads of life, there are those who want to stay with their families, to go back home. And then there are those who are like Ruth, who want to venture and to go and to, and that's what Ruth does. She goes with her mother-in-law, Naomi. She clings to her and says, do not make me leave you. For where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Wow. We see this commitment and love and dedication from Ruth to her mother-in-law. Ruth did not have a fair-weathered love or devotion. She was committed. And as United Methodists, we ask people to make a commitment when you join the church, to make a commitment to pray, prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And we have a challenge to add 50 new people in 50 days from Easter to Pentecost. We've welcomed in the last few weeks 10 new members. To God be the glory. But Melanie and I can't do it on our own. We need your help for you to reach out to your family and friends and neighbors and invite them to come and be a part of what God is doing in the life of this great church. Notice with Ruth, there is not anything about the bleak picture of what it was like to be a widow in those days. She trusts in the God of Naomi. She recognizes in Naomi this strong, resilient, determined faith that Naomi must have had. There was something about Naomi's faith that Ruth wanted to be with her mother-in-law. For she says, and your God will be my God. Wow. In the ancient world, a family was defined by their God. They would take idols with them, and that would define the family for generations, your worship of God. How does our worship of God define who we are? Are we presenting a clear picture of who God is? When I was in Southern Seminary, I was pastoring a small church, Shrewsbury Baptist Church, and a little boy came up to me afterwards and said, you blocked my view of Jesus, not what you wanna hear after a sermon. I knew immediately what he meant, there was a large picture of Jesus right behind the pulpit. And so I learned to preach from either the right or the left side of the pulpit. But over the years, I've thought about that little boy's words. You blocked my view of Jesus. I wondered about that. By how we live and treat others, are we blocking their view of Jesus? Are we presenting a clear, vibrant picture of Jesus by how we live and treat others? Naomi was a loving mother, and she loved Ruth. And Ruth could see something different about her mother-in-law. Now, I know that this day, Mother's Day, that we must give space for those who grieve. For those who grieve, the tragedies of lost children, those who grieve not having their mother present with them, those who have strained relationships with their mothers and mother-like figures. But I thank God for all mothers and what they can mean to their children. I agree with 
John Killinger, who writes, lost in wonder, love, and praise, he shares this incredible affirmation. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who was born of the promise to a virgin named Mary. I believe in the love Mary gave her son that caused her to follow him in his ministry and stand by his cross as he died. I believe in the love of all mothers and its importance in the lives of the children they bear. It is stronger than steel, softer than down, and more resilient than a green sapling on the hillside. It closes wounds, melts disappointments, and enables the weakest child to stand tall and straight in the field of adversity. I believe that this love, even at its best, is only of a shadow of the love of God, a dark revelation of all that we can expect of him, both in this life and the next. And I believe that one of the most beautiful sights in this world is a mother who lets this greater love flow through her to her child, blessing the world with the tenderness of her touch and the tears of her joy. Naomi loved Ruth with a mother's love, pointing her daughter-in-law to God. That kind of love can remind us of Mother Mary. Frederick Buechner writes that Mother Mary, she never got flowers or a card on Mother's Day. In fact, he never offered his own mother any more than he did anyone else. Jesus must have always sensed her need to mother him. What, with a world to save and a death to die? But when Jesus needed her most, she was there at the cross. And there he shares with her, behold your son, son, behold your mother. Mary was there for Jesus and her love can inspire and challenge us to trust in God. What was it like for Mother Mary to be there at the cross watching her firstborn pride and joy die a horrible death upon the cross? A loving mother points her family to God. And we see that example in Naomi and Mother Mary. Let us strive to be a people who point our family to a loving God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us give thanks for those who've helped to strengthen the ties that bind. Blessed be the tie that binds, hymn number 557. Let us stand and sing.